So we've finished our discussion of FSK, how we can get the spectral efficiency, how we had two different expressions, one for coherent, one for, for uh, non-coherent. Now we're going to look at the spectral efficiency of MPSK, and the, the development of this is quite different. So we started with the more difficult, and now we're going to go to something a little uh, more straightforward. So again, it's all covered in the same section of the book in Chapter 9. And we'll start first from BPSK. I'm going to start with PSK, just talk about PSK, but everything I say applies equally well to QAM. Uh, I start with BPSK because it's really simple. We've got a real good feel for what's going on. Suppose I'm sending binary data. Here's the binary data. I'm sending it, uh, uh, so plus and minus one, and here I have the time of a bit, right? So if I decide to transmit this in the most spectrally, spectrally efficient manner possible. Uh, so here I'm showing rectangular, but if I chose to do sync function, that means that um, if I were going to look at the occupied bandwidth, uh, it would be uh, exactly equal to 1 over t. So that the rate divided by the bandwidth would give you 1 bit per second per hertz. Uh, now, what happens if I go to QPSK? Now to understand QPSK, first of all, I'm going to fix the bit rate. It's the exact same data I'm sending. And now what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to send DO, I'm going to send that in the in phase, and the D1 I'm going to send in the quadrature. Right? So I have two coefficients, and I'm going to send the first coefficient, uh, the first bit, in the... Uh, so this becomes a symbol interval. So what was two bit intervals becomes one symbol interval. And that symbol interval, I'm going to send an in phase and a quadrature of each bit. So you can see that the same bit rate is maintained. I'm sending the same information, same amount of time. So the bit rate is saying the same. So the, uh, now think of these as two different channels of communications. You can think of them as here's a BPSK in the in phase, and here's a BPSK in the quadrature. I sort of looked at this uh, before in the constellation diagram. And so we have an information rate in, in one branch and the occupied bandwidth in that branch, just like we did before. And now we've got in the other branch, the quadrature branch, we have the amount of information we're pushing out there and we have the occupied bandwidth. So now I've sent them in like two parallel bit streams. And so what happens now in terms of the total system transmission rate for QPSK. Well, I'm sending, you know, a bit here and I'm sending a bit here, so the total rate is 1 over t, right? I'm sending the same information, only now I'm using two, two branches. So the information rate is the sum of these two. Now the bandwidth, the occupied bandwidth, is that the sum of the two? Here was the sum of the two. Here, no, it's not the sum of the two because one is a cosine, the other one's a sine. So these are cosine of uh, 2 pi f1 or t, and the other one is the sine of 2 pi f1 t. It's not f1 and f2 like it is in frequency shifting. They're the same center frequency. So these two, they are superimposed one on top of each other. So it doesn't take twice as much bandwidth. I don't add up the bandwidth. The bandwidth occupied is 1 over 2t because these two are sent in parallel, they're, they're um, 90 degrees out of phase, so they're separable, they're orthogonal, but they're right on top of one another. So this is why when I go from BPSK to QPSK, I'm sending information at the same bit rate, but I'm occupying half the bandwidth because this stretching to cover two bit intervals allowed me to, in the frequency domain, uh, become smaller. So going from BPSK to QPSK, um, the bandwidth uh, is halved. So again, assuming this ideal pulse, the bandwidth for BPSK was 1 over t, and for the same bit rate it was 1 over 2t. Uh, so we can see that it's twice as spectrally, it, it, it uses half the spectrum twice as spectrally efficient. Uh, and if we looked at the performance, remember I said for the QPSK we could have uh, an exact expression. And this is a Q, this is Q squared. Q goes down exponentially fast, so Q squared is very negligible. So what's left is this term. And this is just twice the PPSK. So in terms of the probability of error for QPSK, 
it's twice the probability of BPSK, but remember, twice is not very important for this Q function because if it's 1 times 10 to the 9th minus 9 or 2 times 10 to the minus 9, 10 to the minus 9 is pretty small. So asymptotically, they're almost identical. So bandwidth efficiency, our original definition, it's the bit rate divided by the occupied bandwidth. For BPSK, we said that gave us one bit per second per hertz. And for QPSK, uh, because the bandwidth is halved, it gives us two bits per second per hertz. So everything I've talked about, the difference between BPSK and QPSK, it really applies as we go to MPSK. It's always a cosine and a sine. Those two branches, cosine and sine, are always, you know, centered on the same central frequency. So there's the same bandwidth, whether the cosine or the sine branch, and that same bandwidth is superposed. Um, so the, the bandwidth is determined by the time of a symbol, right? So it's 1 over TS, and the TS uh, is log 2M times TB. So that, that means that we can go right away into the occupied bandwidth. The ba occupied bandwidth is 1 over TS. That's uh, 1 over TB uh, log 2M. And so now if I just plug it into you know, the bit rate divided by the bandwidth, it's just log 2M. It's, just, it's you know, the number of bits per uh, uh, symbol that I'm sending. So log 2M bits per second per hertz for MPSK. And it's exactly the same for QAM, because everything I argued about, every, um, uh, every development I did was based on in-phase and quadrature. And that's the same whether it's QAM or PSK. So let's look at uh, the same idea, get a feel for what's going on when we look at uh, when we let M get bigger. So let's start MPSK. Again, we're going to fix the bit rate. So here, the, the bit sequence I'm sending. In BPSK, there's only in the in phase, there's nothing in the quadrature. So uh, in this case, um, you have an occupied, certain occupied bandwidth re related to it. Now when I go to QPSK, I'm holding the bit rate the same, but now I'm having the, here I had a transition, you know, every bit, and it was wide, but now it's every two bits I have a transition. So I'm not, here it's, it's like minus one, plus one, I'm changing every time. Here I take the one one and that picks one of the four phases. I send that phase between a long time and so it becomes narrower. And of course I'm not stacking them up like I was in FSK. These are just two branches and they're right on top of each other. So the only scaling factor I have as M gets larger is the fact that the occupied bandwidth is getting smaller. So very straightforward, which is how we end up at that log 2M. So, um, efficiency is log 2m bits per second per hertz. For MPSK, you know, we found the minimal distance and we found the probability of error. So this is sort of the full, uh, a fuller understanding of this modulation format. We have the cost, which was the structure. We have the efficiency for the spectral efficiency and the uh, probability of error, which gives us the um, um, power efficiency. So now we're getting to a more complete picture of the trade-offs we can make with the different modulation formats we've seen. Uh, I want to mention that even for this PSK, you can see directly the QPSK and that what we have in the other part, remember that's the loss compared to QPSK. So that's another way we've looked at it, right? So we're going to quantify it in terms of spectral efficiency. Uh, we have the complexity of the receiver. And when we talk about the probability of error, we often use it in terms of compared to QPSK. So I'm going to go on in a little while and I'm going to compare different modulation formats and instead of going through the big equation like I have here, I'm going to talk about the loss compared to QPSK. Uh, just a reminder, m equal 8, m equal 16, you know, we're looking at 3 or 8 dB loss. Now, I said before that we had a fixed bit rate. But another way of thinking about how I use PSK or QAM, remember everything I'm saying now applies to QAM as well, um, another way to think of it is that I have a certain bandwidth that I'm given. So the bandwidth is fixed. So what happens if I fix the bandwidth instead of fixing the bit rate? Well, I, there's still an exchange to make. There's still this trade-off as I go to different modulation formats. But now what happens is the bandwidth is the same. So now instead of having the uh, amount of information 
transmitted being the same. Now each time I'm sending like um, here, and the same amount of time I was sending one bit. Here I kept the time fixed, right? I sent two bits and two bit times and the time of a symbol changed and the bandwidth changed. Here the time of a symbol is fixed. The bandwidth is fixed. So now the time of a symbol here I could send one bit. And that same time of the same symbol, now I send two bits. And the same time interval of a symbol, now I send three bits. So now if I have a fixed bandwidth, as m increases, my bit rate increases. Here is the bit rate's the same, and as m increases, I'm using uh, less bandwidth. So it's my choice in my system how I'm going to exploit the m. And maybe it's just really what way you're looking at it. <laughs> so if I can look at it as I'm having a fixed bit rate, but I'm reducing the bandwidth occupied, or I can look at it as I have a certain bandwidth available to me, and I'm trying to increase the data rate by using uh, higher order modulation.